Hello everyone, it's Elizabeth from The Smart Stitcher. In this week's video, we are going to be showing you how to sew a parabola. Now you might think this is a really basic shape, but it's one that offers so much potential within thread art that you can sort of really easily group and create some interesting designs. And it's a good sort of building block to build your confidence with. And that's what we want for our first project. So let's get into it. So we're going to start off by drawing a basic parabolic curve. And I've all I've drawn here is a horizontal line and I've made a mark on that line which I'm now going to go at right angles so I'm going to go up at 90 degrees don't worry if you're not exactly on 90 degrees it's absolutely fine and I'm just going to lightly draw those lines in now we don't necessarily want to see pencil on the finished item so don't be tempted to go and draw the lines in a really kind of heavy pen although it can be useful um, when you start the next thing to do is to sort of mark out where we want the stitches to go. So I'm going to do probably just a 5cm one to start us off. And I'm going to mark my stitches at every half centimetre along my ruler, which I shall just show you. So those are all marked on. And I'm going to mark the same amount now for those 5 centimetres along the vertical axis. And then we are going to start to sort of mark our holes for stitching. So we want to make sure that we have an, the same sort of number of holes along both your horizontal and your vertical. So we'll just have a quick count of those. And then we are going to use our cork block to then start to prick our holes for stitching. I've had a quick count and I've got the same on either axis. Now I'm not actually going to be piercing the hole right at what would be zero here. I'm actually starting on the first mark that I've made where my intersection that lies two lines meet is the point at which I am going to be making my hole. So I'm going to work my way along the vertical axis. Sometimes you can use your ruler against this to help sort of keep it nice and straight if you're worried about that. Otherwise you're just going to work your way along and I'm pushing my needle that I'm using for my pricking through the paper so that I'm sort of making a mark where I want the holes to go and where the thread to be stitched. So I'm going to repeat that now along the horizontal axis. It's so the holes are now all marked out. If you realise that you've popped a hole in the wrong place this is where you can use something like a bone folder or the back of a spoon wherever that wrong hole is turn the paper over and just gently sort of tease it shut and then get ready to sort of re-prick the hole that you actually want to be sewing through so don't panic if you realize you've made a mistake sometimes these things happen we're all human and it's incredibly frustrating when they do happen but there's a little kind of work around so turn it over use a bone folder or the back of a spoon just to make sure that that hole is nice and closed sometimes you might find that a little bit of tape on the back helps to sort of support the area as well particularly if the hole that you're putting back in is close by now would be the point if you needed to sort of rub out where your lines were now would be the time to do it i'm not going to do mine because i'm sort of showing you what i'm doing and it just helps me to have those in as a little bit of a guide one thing you can do is when you get a sort of particular formation that you like is to put it on to tracing paper to create a pricking so rather than draw it out all the time on every sheet of paper that you want to do that particular design on you can just sort of position the tracing paper over your paper that you're using and then repeat the process of sort of pricking through to create the holes so that's one way of sort of saving yourself a little bit of time now there isn't a, a magic formula of how much thread you might need to get through um, a particular design I tend to sort of work in arm's length so here I've got two arm's lengths in my needle I folded it over initially to start with and I've just sort of run my hand along the thread to just sort of make sure there's no unnecessary sort of twist where it's been wound onto the uh, cotton reel you will find that you will probably have to unravel the thread and just sort of keep it nice and flat as we go through now I'm going to be starting at the top here and I'm basically starting on this hole and I'm coming down to the first hole on my horizontal axis 
and then I'm going to be coming out along the next hole on my horizontal axis and going back up to the vertical so let me show you what that looks like so I'm going to turn the paper over and I'm going to go through that first hole and I'm going to leave a tail I'm not going to pull my thread all the way through now the reason I don't like using knots here is because if I'm then going to mount it I don't want in time the sort of sense of the knot coming through on the paper which you don't want to see in your design so I'm going to just use a little bit of tape and I'm going to then just tape that down so that it's not going to go anywhere. So as we mentioned I'm now going to come down from the first hole on my vertical axis to the first hole on my horizontal axis. Now this is where I find it useful just to turn the paper over a little bit, get a little bit of a flip to make sure I come up in that sort of correct hole and I'm then going to just turn that over. Now I'm not going to pull it so that the paper starts to tight to go really tight. So if I pulled it like that you can almost kind of see that there's some tension on the paper now and it's going to run the risk of pulling the thread through the paper and leaving a massive hole. So you want your thread to kind of almost cuddle the edge and then you know that you're at the right tension. And what you will probably find as well is that as you start to sew when you've done sort of two or three stitches the first sort of earlier stitches will sort of settle down a little bit more so I'm then going to go back up to my vertical axis and just untangle my thread like so and then this time I'm not going to go across the back I'm going to pop up in the stitch that's next to that one where I've gone down so in an ideally although with some patterns it does happen that you have a long thread trailing over the back but more on that to come I'm just going to be keeping the long thread on the front and I want a short piece of thread on the back so I'm just now creating my first parabolic curve and I'm just using straight lines but the way in which it's sewn is going to create the illusion of a curve so I'm just going to keep going and each time sometimes that can happen as well your thread or not so you just want to pull it out very gently and almost sort of allow it to run over a finger so that it goes nice and smooth again if your thread is hanging and you sort of got it really floppy you'll see that because it just won't look right if your thread is too tight your paper will be wrinkling and you'll know that you'll probably run the risk of pulling your thread through your paper so don't do that so here we go almost at the bottom and this will be our sort of very first curve now there is a bit of a sort of a debate about how many stitches one should have because you can have say slightly larger gaps you can have stitches closer together on paper um, I find if your stitches are too close together you run the risk of perforating um, and sort of ripping the paper. I tend to find that I probably go probably no closer on some designs than say two mil, two millimeters, um, although that might be a little bit larger on other designs. So that is our first curve all stitched. Now to finish the thread off all I'm going to do is take another bit of tape and I'm going to just take that down and then I can trim off my thread and there we have our finished parabola this is just something to help make life a bit easier if you're not 100% certain of way the stitching pattern with this particular design as you look at it you can see I've got my odd numbers in one colour and I've got my even numbers in another. With the odd numbers you are bringing the needle to the front from the back of the paper and with the red numbers you are going through the paper from the right side down to the wrong side of the paper. To finish up we've got a little sneak peek at what is coming in our next tutorial where we take this parabola a little bit further.